Hello everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now what do you think of when you hear 1970s bell bottoms, disco and psychedelic prints? Cynthia Liza Gregoire will be taking us back in time to cover the trends from the 1970s and Theresa Megan Gregoire will be showing us the makeup trends from the same decade. Hannah Richards will be helping us warm those cold nights with her take on classic chicken and vegetable soup and I'll be giving you my happy tips on ways to improve your well-being. We also have Jane Raft who's going to be giving guidelines for our carbohydrate intake in her fitness tip but first we have the news with Excel. Hello Chrissy. Hello my love. Hello viewers. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Are I, you rocking the 70s today? I thought I'd do something with my big hair. I just Your hair's looking a bit wild. Yes, is that like I the... I hope it's convincing. Yeah, I got the thumbs up from the um, makeup artist earlier, so okay. I think I did, I did do successfully yes. well, yeah. Okay, cool. What do you think, viewers? Let us know. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I've got some lovely news for you, um, as usual, but I think I'll start off with something um, quite interesting, I have to say, um, that... I suppose it's a party trick slash skill and this video would actually um, show us a bit more about it. So that was a young man there who um, <laughs> types with his nose and he was actually able to get the Guinness World Record for the fastest um, time it took to type with your nose. He managed to type... I'm going to try it. <laughs> I, think you, I don't think you can do it on the touch screen, Chrissy. Yes, you can. Why not? Are you, are you going to actually oh, attempt to record? Try it. Oh, no way. It's I'll not happening. Oh, no way. No. I'm going to be here, I'm gonna be here forever. He actually managed to type 103 words with his nose in 47.44 seconds. <laughs> Hang on. And <laughs> he's a 23-year-old. Oh, God. I've got it wrong already. No, I think Chrissy just managed to Oh, and to I've got makeup that. on my iPad. Let well, me stop. Exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, get this. He actually practiced for six hours every day for three years. And he was actually able to have the world record of 103 words in 47.44 seconds. Do you seconds. actually get money to be in the... the I think they kind of, I think they kind of get something, but I don't think, I don't know if he's, if you get, I don't know if you would get, that. if you would get money for the rest of his life, but I, I mean, I don't know, I've never really I, looked I, into it. I don't it. actually know, because I can understand if you get money, you get paid for it, but just... You, you probably get something for making it, maybe, <sighs> like a little trophy. <laughs> Oh, wow, all well, that time. Just but it was just really, you know... Bashing your nose on the keyboard. Yeah, and what he typed was, Guinness World Records has challenged me to type this sentence using my nose in the fastest time. Apparently, he also set the world record for typing the entire English alphabet with his fingers, achieving a time of 3.43 seconds. Fingers. So I suppose he did the alphabet in 3.43 seconds. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, so he managed to do everything. So I suppose it was the whole... Yeah. Whatever, yeah. Oh, so in 3.4 okay, seconds, well, that's he impressive. did that. That is impressive. And now he's done it with his snout. Okay. Yes, well, mm, interesting. I have to say it was... Um, it was <laughs> I, had to, I had to highlight that. Well, okay. Um, keeping it in the weird and wacky, a family in France wanted to name their child Nutella. That's so cruel. But they were refused by the courts. Good. Yes, because um, they were told that it would be against the child's best interests to be named after the brand. The child was, um, I think they were initially named, they were, uh, that actually got put on the birth certificate, but it, had, it got taken to court and he had to be renamed. And they changed, um, I don't, it doesn't say what they changed it to, but they had to change his name. And a second family, incidentally, wanted to name their child Strawberry. <laughs> yeah. Again, the court it's, thought that You kind of think, a, okay, you kind of think the parents have a right to call their child yeah. whatever they want to. But they don't have to go to middle school with that name. Yeah. Well, my dad almost had a fight with the priest because the priest didn't like my name. He said, because really? my, my actual name is Christula and that's not a known, very well-known name. He goes, mm -hmm. no, it's, and the priest would say, no, it should be Christina when I was getting christened. And my dad would say, no, it's Christula. And he, the, the priest was insistent to call me something else. But my dad won in the end. Indeed, absolutely. I've kept the name Christula. <laughs> but I think I like unique names, but at the same time, 
not not sort of like on the end of extreme or kind of a bit too weird because imagine mm. naming your child Nutella and all sorts of connotations could come from that yeah, going on. No, it that's would just be wrong. That's just, that's just target for bullying, I'm sorry. Mm. But, um, but yes, I have to say, um, I'm glad that they um, didn't win. They didn't actually go through with that. Like, the, remember the time when I talked People about the man who named his child Facebook? <laughs> Honestly. Seriously, well, um, moving on to, I suppose now let's go to something more compassionate. A police officer in America showed um, compassion on a woman who was actually arrested. Well, she would have been arrested for stealing half a dozen eggs from a supermarket. But he was actually, um, he actually purchased the eggs for her. This was around Christmas time, actually, incidentally. And he said um, he, she was caught stealing the eggs from a dollar store. So, I mean, it would have cost a dollar. And um, she explained that she had a, a niece, two daughters and two grandchildren that hadn't eaten since the previous week. So he ended up, um, said she was quite emotional and she was crying for what she had done. And so he actually ended up paying for the eggs for her. And also, he ended up later on, his um, fellow officers actually put food together and they delivered two truck loads of food to the woman's house actually, to feed her. Actually, so we have a video, because uh, we, we did ask the public mm -hmm. about the nicest things that anyone's done Has for them. Done for I them. think it's quite a nice sort of point to, to play that because since you, you brought it up. Yes, well. Shall we take a look, guys? Let's. Um, she's really good with making people feel better, like when I feel bad about university or I'm unsure if I want to continue studying in, she's always like really good with finding the right words to cheer people up again. Yeah. Uh, you know, nothing specific, but in general, I guess, uh, when you're in need, you need someone just like a good hug or a good chat whenever that's available. So it's not one specific thing, but it's a consistent sort of nicety, okay. I suppose. For you. I think my mom would like me to say that it's her giving birth to me, which is a pretty nice thing, I would have to say. Big sacrifice, okay. not always easy, so yeah, she's been great. Okay. And well, she's my best friend, she's always there for me, so her existence is the nicest Aww. thing ever, so yeah. <laughs> well, not really anything specific, but you know, she's the nicest person in my life that has always been there and you know, I guess that's the nicest thing, you know. Um, she's always there to give me a hug. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> I really don't know. Maybe that my boyfriend surprised me with a beautiful ring on holiday. Uh -huh. So. <laughs> and then I think I should say uh, <laughs> what she did was growing up as the perfect daughter that she is now. That was really nice. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my old man. Um, got me something that I could never forget. I asked him for a concert ticket, which is £40, which we're going to see today. So he says, OK, I'll send me the link and I'll do that. So he sent me the email, asked for my email and sent it to me. Turns out he bought the meet and greet package where I get to meet them, get signatures, everything like that. And I asked him why, and he went, Merry Christmas. <laughs> so I thought, I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> and I'm just over the moon for that. And that's probably one of the nicest things that's ever happened to me, Aww. in all honesty. Um. I guess having him, <laughs> making him happy. <laughs> I know what you're saying, my darling. I feel that way about my hubby. Tell us, what's the nicest thing someone's done for Excel? Oh my gosh. This is going to sound really sad, Chrissy. I can't think of anything oh, come right on, off the top of my head. Really? Oh gosh. Ask me again at the end of the show. You've dropped me I think we need now. to get the violins out because no I one's know. done anything. I took you to Wales with me. There you go. I threw you in the water. Yeah, you said nicest thing, Chrissy. <laughs> Not I most helped you to, thing. I helped you to overcome your fear of swimming. <laughs> I still can't swim. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh All right, so God. we're going to go to a break. You're going to have to think of something. I when will. you come back, and you can let the viewers know the nicest <laughs> thing someone's done for you, or one of the nicest things. Yes. Okay? Yes. Alrighty guys, so do stay tuned because after the break it's 1970s fashion and makeup with the Gregoire sisters. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter.
Welcome back. And now it's back to the 70s with the Gregoire sisters. Hello, girls. Hi, Chrissy. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So let's talk makeup and fashion from the 70s. Yes, let's do. So what was happening in the 70s? Well, there is women's liberation, feminism. There's a lot of influences for, you know, things such as equal wages happening. Mm. And believe it or not, that actually had an influence on the makeup industry. Okay. So you have women who are pictured in adverts with trousers on, which mm. was a first for Revlon. Uh, they advertise a perfume, I think it was called Charlie. I and that. so they definitely took advantage of that. And another way they took advantage of that was kind of marketing things like barely there makeup. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just a different way to kind of sell the same product in a different decade uh -huh. um, where you would buy something like a barely there liquid blusher. Mm -hmm. So really, you know, the matte skin was out. So you, okay. you didn't want a matte finish. So you go for the dewy foundations and you wouldn't want to pick a color darker or lighter, you wanted it right just for some reason, the same color of your skin, mm -hmm. so that kind of washed out look was popular. Oh. <laughs> um, apparently so was the um, so was the tanning, which I think was a bit too excessive. Um, and <laughs> the I think orange, they was it? The, well, I think it was when they were getting the baby oil out and actually oh, going into okay. the sun and then realized after <laughs> what, you know, Bad kind of, you. yeah, negative <laughs> impacts that can have. So let's talk about the looks. So we have, you know, colors coming back, blue, 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 I have to say. <laughs> that was one of the favorites. Greens, purples, those were really key colors. Mm -hmm. And we had it coming out in mascaras as well. Okay. So you would have different color mascaras to play around. So even though we were doing, you know, minimal, barely their makeup, there was impact um, on the eyes, especially, you know, extremely uh, popular in the disco era mm. was you know those sparkly eyes so you want to get all the glitter you want to get that bang um big cat eye in there very dramatic but when we're picking lipsticks you know very common colors were the kind of color of your lips same mm -hmm. tone and it was a very nice neutral natural color so the browns and the you know, pinks were very popular as well. Yeah. But you can see with Chrissy's makeup here, we did a kind of shadow cat eye. So they still use the liners to draw out the the cat eye winged liner. So we got purple, which was very trending. And you can see, Chrissy, your eyebrows are perfect for the 70s trend because they weren't into the big brows. They were mm -hmm. definitely into the, you know, more thin brow. So sharpen your eyebrow pencil to get that look and also let's just get rid of these false lashes Chrissy because yep. those were out with 1960s okay, okay. <laughs> so another thing is we have inspiration <clears throat> such as the white liner that we have on Cynthia behind the black liner this was a very 70s look where we, you know usually usually of the younger generation and also young women that they would put that white and emphasize almost you know accentuate that black liner which was very popular a color wash so you would have just one eyeshadow covering mm -hmm. the whole lid but you would always have a highlight underneath of a nice kind of matte white okay. so i don't know what it was but you definitely wanted to you know just accentuate the brow underneath with that so again we have all of these blush colors not in powders but mm. in the liquids. the liquid mm -hmm. so that it was you know it was not giving you that wash that look but we have movies such as the great gatsby where you would still have that kind of bold smoky look mm -hmm. but with the thin eyebrow okay so you would still have that and kind of a doll face look so you know movies like the boyfriend they would you know inspire those doll face kind of light pale skin with you know those you know Thin, thin, thin eyebrows, eyebrows. <laughs> and it was great. So we have, you know, Cher coming in. We had a lot of influence in the 70s. Farrah Fawcett with the hair that's going off of your face. So it, it was just a great, great era. I wish I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like well, I we are. We are. <laughs> we are at the moment, aren't we? Yeah. All right, my love. Thank you so, so much. You're and welcome. we're going to go over now to the styling. Okay. So let's follow Cynthia. Great. 
So, 70s styling, what was it all about, Cynthia? Yes, all right, well, um, 1970s styling, it's all about bell bottoms and angel sleeves, crazy psychedelic patterns, we have polyester, all those synthetic fabrics. Today we're just going to look at some of the ways that you can take inspiration from the 70s, which are trending now, and bring it into the year 2015. So I think what we'll do is we'll start with a few slides just for inspiration. So the first slide that I have here is um, actually there's Thea Porter. She was a mm -hmm. British lady that actually was very influential during the 70s dressing celebrities here in London. And she actually has a lot of her dresses on at the uh, Fashion and Textile Museum February okay. 6th. Mm -hmm. So you can actually go there and see mm -hmm. some actual garments. That's kind of cool. Um, the next slide that I have uh, just basically, you can see some of the details we'll be looking for today. So you have the bold colors. We've got those polyester pants. They're flared pants, as Megan had said, that the women was wearing the pants. And uh, next slide. Uh, again, those crazy patterns that mm. polyester is a must. So I don't know. What do you think about polyester, Chrissy? Do you like wearing it? Or I don't really yeah. like it because it doesn't breathe, but it's cool because yeah. it doesn't ring. I thought, you know what, garments I've got that are polyester, to be honest. I probably, I'll just wear them and I don't realize what material really? You're wearing is. polyester today. <laughs> Am I? Okay. Yeah. Does that mean I'm going to suffocate? <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, moving along, we have, I think the next slide is uh, Bridget Bardot, and so she's lost that 1960s, you know, sort of hippie look, and she's mm. now treated in a longer silhouette dress, she's got the angel sleeves there, the it's hair is a bit isn't darker. Mm. Yeah, so you can see this transition yeah. in fashion, even through the people who lived through both mm -hmm. eras. A um, couple more slides, I think. This one here is just a, I googled British girl in 70s and here's what I got. And you can see that they have the, the mini skirt here, not wanting to let go of that from the 60s with the fringe on it. You've got those bell sort of sleeve gather uh, sleeves with polyester yellow and those knee high boots. Even her glasses and the way she's got her hair parted down the middle, such as myself today, is very, very 70s. Mm -hmm. So take yeah. from that what you will. Um, all right, well, I think that was it for slides, but um, I'm just going to talk about the styling that I've done on all three of us today. So we'll start with uh, Glam Goddess, we'll start with Chrissy. So Chrissy's today is wearing a Diane von Furstenberg, and Diane von Furstenberg is an American designer that's very famous for um, still bringing back that 1970s silhouette in, in 2014. So we've paired it with some new Sam Edelman pumps and you can see that she's got this like kind of Grecian, Grecian goddess sort of draping dress in this fabulous blue as Megan was talking about. Mm -hmm. When we've pa paired it with earrings and with your makeup today it's just very 2007, uh, 2015, 1970s. I'm very comfy too this one. It's great. Yep. It's polyester. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I um, can breathe. <laughs> next we have a Megan and Megan is my disco diva. So the disco was a major part of the 1970s. We've got glam, we've got glitter, we have uh, metallic and we have sequins. So we've got Sam Edelman pumps. We've got essential with this lovely pencil sequin skirt. Funny enough, they called this the midi skirt. Uh, it was a very fought um, people were fighting against it. They wanted to keep the mini skirt, but it's a wonderful silhouette and she's got that nice um, disco top with it and then the hair like Farrah Fawcett. On myself, I went for um, a more 2015 70s inspired look. So I started with a pair of platforms. I went with a boot cut jean that is slightly flared at the leg. So you can see that there. And uh, you could go with bell bottoms there. And then I went for high-waisted because 1970s was all about the high waist. And I have a t-shirt with just sort of like a 1970s graphic on it. And I did pair it with this uh, fringe jacket, which is, some might say that fringe is a little more 60s, but you, it's all about taking the best of, you know, the era before it and combining the two. Okay. All right. So we have a lovely row here. Yeah. And these are... These are all Your mine, clothes. actually. <laughs> now tell me, Cynthia, where do you actually wear these clothes and when do you wear them? Because I was quite surprised when really? she told me these. <laughs> I wear these pretty much every day, I would say. Um, yeah, it's just So you get on the tube wearing wear. these, <laughs> looking, looking glam. <laughs> she I gets do. on the tube, she goes to work in these. She, I do, she's, I and you know, it's all... Amazing. <laughs> Do people stare at you? A little bit. Some people <laughs> ask me where I get it. And you know what? Um, I think it's just what you're comfortable in, Chrissy. Yeah. And like, for some reason, it's I'm nice. comfortable it's in good. this. Yeah, this one is um, like what I was talking about, those angel sleeves. Mm. And this one's really pretty in summer, actually, it with the, lovely. you know, you can just picture running through a meadow with that. Um, <laughs> This I want to run through a meadow. <laughs> this one, one of those too? people behind running through a meadow. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right there. <laughs> 
This one here is um, a bit of like a, that angel sort of bell sleeve. If you're looking for sort of an, a 2000 sort of 15 look, a more updated look, you could go with something like this and then just do the earrings and the hair and the makeup That's 70s, nice, yeah. right? If you're not into going crazy with the colors and patterns, because to be honest, you're not going to see a lot of black. Like this is what it was yeah. like, right? This is actually 1970s. I got this in Toronto. I used to wear this all the time to school. And it, <laughs> I, it's oh. polyester, it, it works, it, it was really comfortable. Um, you also have young and upcoming designers. This one by Jonte in North Battleford, and he actually made this dress I've worn on a previous show, and you can just see that huge bell sleeve yeah. on there, like quite outrageous, but that is what Very they nice. wore in the 70s, yeah. believe it or not. Uh, we have a couple more pieces here. Again, this like angel sleeve dress. Bridget Bardot was wearing something similar mm. to that in the picture that I showed, but you can almost just, it was all about the movement and just kind of floaty sort of frocks. It looks so comfy as well, yeah. that one. Uh, the longer silhouette too, right? So having a longer silhouette on a dress, whereas in the 60s, you just saw all those little mini shift dresses and mini skirts. This one here, again, the wide short sleeve. This one's kind of hard to see because it's got the, the tight belt on it, but just a lovely color, uh, deep, deep green, as Megan was saying about the greens and the blues. And then you have that um, long silhouette. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. this one actually, you know what? I just bought this at school. There was a vintage fair that oh. came through my school. And this That's one really here. Nice, that. I chose this one because actually it's, it's very similar to what's trending in spring, summer 15. It's this whole sheer sort of overlay of that crinoline on top. And that this one almost looks like very much like a wedding. You could almost see that as a wedding dress mm -hmm. kind of thing, but it is just casual dress. Again, you know, when you're buying vintage there, the loops missing belt but oh well it's still <laughs> oh, a beautiful dress and cut that yeah. off anyway yeah all right girls thank you so much we have reached the end of this segment and oh, thanks thank for taking us back to the 70s yeah. thank you all right well do stay tuned because after the break i'm going to be giving you my happy tips on ways to improve your well-being and we'll have a fitness tip with jane rafter don't forget to subscribe to the chrissy b show always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back everyone. So now it's time for my happy tips and this week it's how to improve your well-being. Now as you know well-being is basically the state of being comfortable, healthy and happy with your life. So research has actually shown that there are six ways that you can improve your well-being. The first one is to connect with people. So it's never a good thing to isolate yourself. You know even if you're going through a few things and you don't feel like talking to people still get yourself out there so you know have some connection with your family with your friends even with colleagues at work and neighbors so don't stay by yourself and at the same time you feel better talking to people and you can learn so much from other people have a laugh and feel that you're actually part of something number two is give so we did play the video earlier of showing you know asking people what's the nicest thing anyone's done for them so do something nice for people maybe it's a friend or even a stranger even a like a simple thank you your bus driver, for example, how many times do we get on the bus and we just ignore the bus driver? But if you actually take time, even if they're a bit grumpy, if you take time to smile and say hello or say thank you when you get off the bus, that could make a world of difference to someone's day. You can volunteer your time, for example, to charity. And if you say, you know, but that person doesn't deserve it, maybe they're just going through a hard time and just a little bit of attention from you could change their mind, can make them react differently as well. And as I said before, um, it doesn't have to be anything major or a, a big gesture for it to make a difference in someone's life. Even small things go a long, long way. Number three is to take notice. Now, we hear a lot about mindfulness. So appreciate the things around you. Sometimes we just rush through life and we don't really kind of um, take in what we're doing. A simple example is when you're eating your food, for example. I was actually reading an article today uh, but if you want to, to lose weight successfully, you should, shouldn't be on your iPad or, or doing something while you're eating. You need to sort of st step back and think about what you're eating, you know, realize what you're doing. Don't, be, don't have your mind elsewhere and actually you'll get fuller quicker. So that's just in an example of food. But you should be aware of your surroundings. How many times, for example, maybe have you walked down the street or in a park and you're busy on your phone or you're thinking about other things? Just be aware of nature, of the trees, of the birds singing. It's such, so, 
so lovely and you could be missing it. So appreciate your environment. And actually, I, I once really disliked England when I was younger because I was always brought up to by my dad to say, you know, we're not going to stay in England. It's, it's not a nice place to live. We're going to move to Cyprus. So I grew up really disliking London until a friend said to me once when I was older, oh, you know what, I've been to so many places and London's the most beautiful city in the world for me. And that made me start looking at things in a different way. And today I love London. I love England. There's so many lovely places. So just be aware of your environment and appreciate what you have around you and you'll be a lot happier. Before I continue, let's just go to this fitness tip with Jane and then I'll be back to talk about a few more things that can improve your well-being. Hi everyone, it's Jane here with your fitness tips. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about your nutrition today. So um, I want to specifically talk to you about carbohydrates. Now, in the last few years, they've had a bad press and most people will have heard of the Atkins diet, which um, asks you to eliminate all carbohydrates. My personal view is it's better to have a balanced diet, to have a nice healthy balanced diet and perhaps to reduce carbohydrates and increase protein, fruit and vegetables. So if we, um, if we take carbohydrates in its simplest form to mean things like potato, rice and pasta, those are the most common forms in which we take in carbohydrates. And do you know, even though it's healthy um, and good for you, most people often end up eating too many carbohydrates. And carbohydrates is the food that gives you energy. So if you think about it, if you're eating in the evening and then you're just resting on the sofa, you don't need a lot of energy. It's like having your car just running on idle at a red light. Okay, so you don't need a lot of energy to do that. If you're going 70 miles an hour up the fast lane, you need more fuel. It's the same thing for your body. So if you're not training hard, have a, a small amount of carbohydrates. They're good for filling you up. Um, a general rule is to have a fist-sized portion of carbohydrates, which is actually quite small. So if you're trying to lose weight, my advice is reduce the amount of carbohydrates that you eat. Don't eliminate them, reduce them, increase the protein. So don't just have a tiny little piece of protein, which would be your chicken, your fish, eggs, nuts, whatever it is that you're eating. Increase that, load up your plate with vegetables and salad and fill up on that. And you should, with any luck, shed some body fat. So good luck with that, see you next time. Thanks for the great advice, Jane. Okay, so let's now go back to my happy tips on ways to improve your well-being. So number four is to keep learning. Now, how many times have we seen and also research has also proven that, you know, as, as a person gets older, if they, they stop learning, normally their health starts to go downhill. But if they keep doing something, if they keep learning something new, people actually live longer. So try something new, whatever your age. You can rediscover an old interest. You can sign up for a course, for example. You can maybe do something even different at work that's gonna keep you kind of occupied and excited about the future. Maybe you can learn how to cook your favorite food. And you can, you know, I, I like to challenge myself with things sometimes and try different things. So that's why you see me doing some, some challenges on the show sometimes. So just keep your mind active, learn new things, and it will make you feel more confident and you'll have fun too. So number five is to be active. Now, this one is so obvious, but unfortunately many people do neglect, you know, even just to go for a walk. So try and get active, go for a walk or run, go outside, dance. If you like to dance, just put some music on in your bedroom and just move so you're not just, you know, sitting at your desk the whole time. Now, recently I, I, I got an app on my phone that actually uh, measures the amount of steps that I make and it's, you're supposed to aim for 10,000 a day. And I, I realised how little I do actually walk during the day because I think the first day I just clocked up about 2,000 and the recommended is like 10,000 steps. So I've started to try and walk around more, go upstairs. So, you know, it, it really, you really should sort of invest, even if it's just walking more to the, I don't know, instead of taking the bus, you walk, you get in the exercise and it's good for your mental health. And number six is all about caring. So look after your community and your environment. 
I really hate seeing when people just kind of like have a can or something or some, some kind of litter and they just throw it on the floor. It's, it doesn't make things pleasant for anyone. We've all got to live in the mess. So start looking after the environment, use the litter bins, be, be environmentally friendly and you'll actually feel better for it as well. Okay, so I think we may have about a minute left or so, so we can go to Excel quickly for, I think, one news item, Excel. Certainly, Chrissy, I have more news here. Um, I'm sure our viewers will remember when I talked about the um, young man who wanted somebody to travel with him to take the place of his girlfriend on the um, ticket that unfortunately kind of got, she couldn't go on after they split up. Well, we found someone, like I've already reported, and now this is the, you know, what happened thereafter. Well, he went with this young lady, Elizabeth Gallagher, who's 23, and Jordan, who's 28. They went round the, had this world holiday where she went from Milan to New York and Vienna. Apparently, she sees him as a brother despite all of these romantic places they went to. Well, I should hope so, because the girl already had a boyfriend. Well, the, um, she actually said, we probably got along better because we were strangers. We didn't have a relationship to break, said um, Elizabeth. He had um, offered this ticket, uh, just to recap, to anybody who was from the same country, which is Canada, as well as having the same name. So we have some photos here. I mean, this one here talks about, it shows, um, that looks like a massive lobster or crab or whatever that is. And, you know, probably got her to pick out what she wanted to eat at a very fancy restaurant there. And we also have, and that looks like part of a fair or theater or something. So this was all posted on, um, on Twitter just to kind of show how this was going around the world, which is absolutely fabulous. The trip, like I said, um, started on the 21st of December and ended on January 8th. So I'm glad um, Miss Gallagher's boyfriend's glad to have her back now. Fab. Um, another young lady I've managed to come across, Faye Campbell. She has a very weird um, eating um, habit, I would say, because she chooses McDonald's over any homemade meal because apparently oh she's never touched a green vegetable no. or a piece of fruit. I think Jane will have a few words for you, young lady. Jane and Chrissy and Hannah. And in, all well, in the, and myself as well, because mm. it's ridiculous. Um, apparently, she is, um, she, I think she's now 23. Her name is Faye Campbell. But she actually manages to stay a very trim nine stone, 12 pounds. Despite she's fat inside. Well, this There's is the thing. I think she organs. must be clogged up. Exactly. Definitely. She's only young, but it's going to, it will take effect. She, she apparently lives in Suffolk and she says the thought of eating vegetables makes me sick and she literally, she can't put, she can't put anything near her mouth. Even when her mother is cooking, she has to leave the room and she actually has to have pizza for lunch, cheeseburgers for dinner and all of that. So, oh, thank you very much, Excel. Indeed. You're going to join me after the break, aren't you? Because we do Certainly. have some more news and also we have a lovely recipe from Hannah Richards. Stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Welcome back, everyone. So we're going to go across to Excel in just a moment with some more news. But as you know, eating healthily can also help your mental health immensely. So Hannah Richards making chicken and vegetable soup in a very healthy way. Let's take a look. Hello and welcome to the MTS Kitchen. My name's Hannah and this is Ben, and today we're going to show you how to make a chicken and vegetable seasonal soup. We're going to start with um, our, veg our vegetable prep, and I've already just cut down some carrots, white potatoes and sweet potatoes. This is 500 grams of chicken breast and I'm just slicing it up so that it cooks quicker. So let's just put that, I'm going to take that garlic, that pan's hot. So this is just sort of our base. You could use a red onion, you could add some chilli in here. 
So with the chicken, just make sure that it's all nice and browned. You're sort of searing the chicken and keep it moving around the pan so that all that beautiful pink breast turns to white. Once, we, once the chicken breast is all white, then we can start to add the mushrooms to it. Let's get those veg bubbling up. Okay, Ben, ready for those mushrooms? Mushrooms. Straight in? Yeah. And I'm just going to turn the heat down now on those because the, the chicken's done. A bit of sea salt. Don't be scared of salt, remember, as long as it's not kitchen salt, soda, um, table salt. And some black peppercorns, white peppercorns or red peppercorns. And you can always test, you can always have a little test to see whether that chicken's done or not. Just take a piece out. So we're going to leave that to the side and have a little look at our veg. Okay, so now the, veg the vegetables are done. Um, so I'm gonna turn them down. And the chicken's done too. So all we need to do now is, is put it all in the, um, in the Maggi mix. So this was 500 grams of chicken, chicken breast. You can use the thigh if you're more of a leg person. Um, and we added garlic, some shallots, and some mushrooms. This juice is where the flavour comes from. We're going to add our carrots, sweet potatoes and white potatoes. Now the water, um, the water from the vegetables is now full of all your good nutrients and vitamins, so we don't want to throw away that water. You might find that sometimes when you're, you know, when you're doing a, a roast dinner, you use the water from the vegetables to make the gravy. Right, yeah. So we're just going to put all that in there. Um, depending on how chunky you want it, depends on how long you put, keep your finger on the, on the button. Um, okay, so then all we're going to do, actually what I thought I'd just do is throw a bit of uh, spinach in for some green on the top. Because spinach just takes, you know, no time to cook, you can wilt it down. Just the heat of the food will, will wilt the spinach in here. A nice chunky soup. And then to top it off with some garnish, I'm going to just put a few bits of chive on top. Some red, yellow and black peppercorns. A touch of our favourite sea salt, two spoons and we're ready for lunch. Perfect. Seasonal chicken and vegetable soup. Mmm, mm. beautiful. Or dinner in our case, right? Mm, I know, gosh, <laughs> looking at that now, I just want to tuck. And nice and healthy too. Indeed. All right, Ixa, we have some more news. Yes, I do. Um, a young lady made an impression on a stranger recently where um, her son was very well behaved on the train. Mm. Her name is Sammy Welch, 23, of Plymouth. Um, she was given a, um, a reward, I should say, because she was branded a credit to her generation because she travelled on the train with her three-year-old son, Ryan, and he was very well behaved. The young mum was given a, note, a five pound note by a man who wrote as well, wrote on a separate sheet of paper, said, have a drink on me, you're a credit to your generation, polite and teaching your little boy good manners. P.S. I have a daughter your age, someone did the same thing for her once, and I hope she has children, I hope when she has children, she'll be a good as a mother as you. And he also, um, he sort of gave it to her and but he passed it on to her as if she dropped something. He didn't sort of like hand it to her like oh, money okay. outright. He just so he left the note there on the side for um, on the table for her because he noticed that when um, some people got on the train, a, a gentleman particularly got on the train, she actually got the young boy to get off the seat and sit on her lap, okay. and the boy didn't argue or mm. anything like that. He was very well behaved, and she was um, she said she was on the train from Birmingham to Plymouth, and um, this this man must have got off 
in Bristol, she said, and it was in the evening. So right, right now, actually, she's trying to locate him and trying to find out who he is because she says it was very kind of her. Aww. And that she was also entertaining um, Rylan throughout the See, busy service. See, talking about acts of kindness. Absolutely. Oh, by the way. Indeed. What's the nicest thing anyone's <laughs> done for you? You didn't tell us, Excel. <laughs> Well, have you thought of at I, well, least I one to say, thing? I know, I know. I think one thing that definitely um, I was very, very... Um, it, it may seem like a little thing, but I have to say, because I work with um, in a difficult kind of job setting, and I think knowing that a client that I've worked with was very appreciative of what I've sort of helped them to achieve, I think that was very heartwarming for me because she ended up buying me um, a fob watch and actually had it engraved with my oh, name on it. That's nice. And I have to say, it was very, very nice and I did enjoy that. I think I hold that very, very dear. So, yes, that's one thing I could think of. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> nice. You see, there was something. You just need your time to think I know, about you it. You just put me on the spot. I'm not used to this. I have to rehearse my lines. <laughs> Well, um, but yeah, so that that's uh, so I think I'm going to follow this because um, this is somebody we need to also track down. And speaking of tracking down, um, this is another love story here. A Crystal Palace fan launched a quest for his lost love because he took a selfie with her on the train when he's um, he went to watch his side play. He um, apparently this young lady had an Italian accent and she had borrowed. Oh, he just met her randomly. You mean? He met her randomly mm. on the train. So she apparently had an um, Italian accent and had borrowed his scarf for a mutual selfie. And so now he kind of, you know, he said he realized that he didn't ask for her number. And so he tweeted the train company to help to find his romantic quest. But silly old me, I forgot to put his photo in. So I'm Aww. going to have to um, help you launch your appeal maybe next week. Do we possibly. have a picture of her? No, they, I, I actually had a picture of them together, but I forgot oh. to include it in my file. Oh, for this. I'm curious I now. know, but I can, sh I can make a, a brief mention next week. <laughs> okay. I'm all in the support of love. So, um, but apparently his tweet got Let's viral. Let's hope she's single. Did he even check? Well, I think she was, but I think they were kind of flirting with each other a little bit because I think he, you know, but I have to say... Um, the, the tweet went viral as usual, but by, by half time, apparently it was retweeted 30 times and by full time it was over 100. Oh, gosh. So, you know, well, so this is it. But um, it's fabulous. But now it's over 3,000 retweets. Wow. Which, which means, you know. I was just glad to see it at some point. Probably find her. Yeah, probably find her soon. Got time right. for one quick one. Okay. I've got a, um, a funny video here. If we cue this and I'll explain thereafter. Got this a joy is the showdown. In, no, got a joy in Raleigh, North Carolina. Good morning. Hey, Good somebody from down south. Well, you're right, I'm from down south. Oh, God, it's mom. And I'm your mother. And I, di I disagree that all families are like ours. I don't know many families that are <laughs> fighting at Thanksgiving. Is this, is this really and your mother? No, it is our mom. Yeah. I was very glad that this Thanksgiving was a year that you two were supposed to go to your in-laws. And, I was ho and I'm hoping you'll have some of this out of your system when you come here for Christmas. And I love you both. <laughs> hey, now, now let me jump in because this was not planned. She called mm -hmm. in on the normal line. So, uh, but since you did call in, Mrs. Woodhouse, <laughs> what's it like to raise these two boys? Well, it hadn't been easy. <laughs> and they're both um, very passionate about what they believe in, and um, and I love that about them. But I um, I hope that um, they just kind of get this out of their system today on your program. By the way, I know no way that I had his wishful things. Are you a Democrat or Republican, Mrs. Woodhouse? Well, I am. I am a registered Democrat. That's uh, many, many years ago, but I have, you know, at times split my ticket. Joy, thank you we. for the call. And again, this was not planned, but um, we're glad to hear from you. All right, Thanks, Mom. Mom. We'll see you back home soon. See you this weekend. Oops. I think it was actually quite hilarious because their mother just randomly called in on yeah. the line. You know how the political programs are, you know, call in and give us your opinion. And their mother just turned up, just called up and said, oh, someone from down south. The mum was like, yeah, I am your mother. It's like, <laughs> stop bickering. Come home for Christmas and get that oh, out of your system. Oh, you see, she just wants people to get along. Well, we Indeed. have to leave it there, Excel. Thank you so much. No problem. Right, guys at home, if you want more information about the guests we've had on the show today, or if you want more to find out more about us and what we do, you can visit the website chrissybshow.tv and also if you'd like to email me it's chris at chrissybshow.tv but don't forget as well to make someone's day even if it's something small
see you next time. Bye-bye for now.